Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I am fired up. I want to start today by wishing every one of you a very happy Jesus Pride Month. Have a happy Jesus Pride Day and a happy Jesus Pride Month. It's Jesus Pride all month long here at the Upper Room. Church of God in Christ, we are celebrating, hallelujah, uh, the month of June. Brother Gary, all month long, celebrating the Lord Jesus. Look at this, my friends. Do you see it? Do you see the big flag? Gary didn't know I was going to stand up and do all of this. I'm kind of throwing it off a little bit. But look at that. Jesus. And we got the seven colors of the rainbow, not the six and the odd colors that the rest of them are using. But God's rainbow, seven colors, we are pushing back against the enemy. And we are not going to be one of those churches that are silent as the world claims the month of June uh, for Pride Month, which is uh, uh, LGBTQ plus month. And uh, so I guess what we're going to do, uh, what many have decided to do, is to be silent as we Sodom and Gomorrahize America. Uh, as we Sodom, hear me now, and Gomorrahize uh, America. The Bible says this in uh, Genesis chapter number 18 and verse 20. It's on your screen there. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come up unto me. And if not, I will know. God sent three angels down to Sodom and Gomorrah to check out those wicked cities to see if they were as wicked as the outcry of their wicked behavior suggested. The Bible says in, uh, in Genesis chapter number 13 and verse 13, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Notice in Genesis chapter 13 and verse 13, the word exceedingly uh, is used. And in Genesis chapter number 18, and verse uh, number 20, the word is very grievous. So anytime you're talking about exceedingly, you're talking about more than normal. Anytime you're talking about very grievous, very grievous, then it's got to be uh, much more grievous than something else that is grievous. Now, it's all grievous, but apparently, according to the scriptures, there are degrees in grievous because they were very grievous. If words have meaning, then I am correct in what I'm saying to you. And, uh, and if you are wicked before the Lord exceedingly, that is your wicked in abundance. Your wickedness is surpassing, uh, most wickedness because you are exceeding. And here we are today. Here we are celebrating that which the God of the Bible calls grievous and exceedingly wicked. We are having, look at this, look at this, my friends. I have before you your pride, your guide to pride in the triangle. Can you believe this? Your guide to pride in the triangle. June is officially Pride Month, and we have our guide to, uh, to the events happening in the triangle. Now, look at this. This this is this is bad. June is uh, June is officially Pride Month, and we have your 
guide this uh, to the events happening in the triangle. And it's written with an exclamation point. And it gives dates, dates, all month, Raleigh Pride events. And it gives dates, June the 7th, June the 8th. Oh my, uh, June the 8th, June the 8th, 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 9th, 15th, 22nd, 28th, 28th, 29th. I mean, we're going to be Sodom and Gomorrahizing uh, society all month long. And on one of the June the 8th, I won't even tell you where it is, uh, celebrations, listen to this. Will you listen to this? It says celebrate the LGBTQ plus community and their loved ones with music, food, games, uh, vendors and activities uh, at, at the, uh, the, the town hall of the city on the on the street of the city is from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Admission is free. Then it says, look at that. Listen to this, my friends. And a kids zone with inflatable inflatables and games. Now a kids zone at the LGBTQ Pride celebration when everybody knows that most of the time, many, if not the overwhelming majority of people who are part of the of this and I use this word loosely, community, were raped, abused, and fondled. They were turned out as children. And yet there's a kids zone. They're targeting the kids. And uh, on one celebration, it says family-friendly street festival is, and it gives the time, it gives the street and listen, listen to the speakers. There will be speakers, performers, vendors, and a kids zone. Uh, I mean, these people are coming after our children. On some, there's a food truck and a drag show. Now, how does that go together? You got a food truck and the drag show. And uh, let's see. Uh Yes, a big part of it is uh, the third annual Pride Market and Drag Show in partnership with the, uh, uh, the, the name of someone they're partnering with to benefit the LBGTQ Center. Oh, my. And they're going to charge you $10 to get into that one. Uh, all of this stuff is going on uh, right here in the city as they are celebrating Immorality. On one, they're having food. I guess they love to eat food, dance, more fun. Uh, and there will be a drag show performances, DJs and food trucks. I mean, they are getting down in the name of uh, LGBTQ plus. And I guess I guess these people have decided that uh we're just going to ignore the Bible. We're going to ignore biblical truth, biblical teachings. We're going to ignore everything that the scriptures has to say. And also, not only are they Sodom and Gomorrah, America and the community, but uh, guess who's involved? Uh, also, now I don't know about the the fraternity fraternities yet, but the sororities are really involved. I have here in my hand that I want to show you um, uh, some advertisements from these uh, fraternities celebrating the joy, love, and fortitude of the LBGTQ plus community as we continue our efforts to create more inclusive environments for all. Happy Pride. Now, this is from Delta Sigma Theta. Good old, the Deltas, the Deltas are celebrating Pride Month. Now, okay, Deltas, if y'all want to celebrate Pride Month, Brother Wooden has no problem at all. But I want to know, how does the ladies in the Deltas who claim to know Jesus, and you churches that have whole sections 
in your service so the deltas can come in and do their thing uh, whenever they want to. My question is, if they're doing this, are you, and, and this is public, I didn't find this, it was public. They announced it, they put it out. Uh, I want to know from those so-called sanctified deltas, are you going to publicly uh, say something about this? Or will you do what you generally do when it's something you don't agree with or if it's something that goes against uh, your relationship with the Lord? You'll just be quiet. You'll, you'll make ineffective comments to two or three people in your circle, but you'll say nothing publicly as the Deltas publicly uh, says, Happy Pride Month. And look at this one. Uh, this is the uh, Sigma Gamma Rho sorority. Praise the Lord. Look at what they're putting out. Pride. Look at this. Look at this. Pride Month. They are uh, happy to, be, to celebrate Pride Month. Now, if you're, again, I'm not talking about the ones who are not saved. I'm not talking about the partiers. The smokers, the drinkers, the fornicators. I'm not talking about those who haven't been washed in the blood. I'm talking about, I'm talking to those of you who claim to be blood bought. And you're serving Jesus Christ and you love the Lord. You love him with all your heart. Are you going to say something about this? Is this enough to cause you to come out? of an organization that you shouldn't be a part of in the first place. And last one, here is uh, uh, the, well, no, I got, I got, I got a few more. Uh, uh, Zeta Phi Beta. Look at this one. My rainbow is beautiful. Look at how they're celebrating Pride Month. Now, none of these people have sent me anything saying Happy Jesus Pride Month. <laughs> None of them are saying, no, we represent Jesus Christ as we do good community work. That's why, that, isn't, that why they, isn't that how they got you? You know, we do so many things in the community. Well, this is, I guess this is a part has been added to your community work uh, lists. You, you celebrate that which the Bible calls an abomination. Again, uh, sorority, I'm not talking to your members who do not know Jesus Christ. I'm talking to those who claim to know the Lord, claim to be born again. And uh, uh, I want to know how can, you, how can you stay in this? How can you be silent? Do you have the Holy Spirit? You're in a go tell it religion. The Bible anointed the uh, filled the disciples uh, with the Holy Ghost again for the second time in Acts chapter four. And they spoke the word of God even more boldly. Are you going to do this? Look at this one. The AKAs, I saved them for last. Look at this. And the AKAs, they even put on their, uh, Brother Gary, they got, a, they, they got two women hugged up. Uh... And uh, I guess uh, since, since they're celebrating pride, I'm assuming, and maybe I'm being unreasonable, that these are lesbians. So uh, they got the, 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 the two lesbians here, the Alpha Kappa, Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And it says love, respect, freedom, tolerance, equality, and pride. How about holiness? How about righteousness? How about a biblical worldview? All right, you ladies who are in it, how do you, what are you saying? What are you saying publicly? What are you going to say? You have public things to say about me. You have things to say about preachers. You have horrible things to say that you post online about young women who were a part of the sorority, who denounced, who came out, who decided that they're just going to serve the Lord God of the Bible only, that they were not going to be in a vow to a false God, which every one of these sororities, you know you have your gods, you know you have your female goddesses that you give your oath to, 
Many of you, if not all of you, are given a sorority name. And some of you have been given a brand. You know I'm telling you the truth. Now, what are you doing saved and sanctified and claiming to know the Lord and claiming to be on your way to heaven and you're part of something like this and then and then the, the, the sorority, they don't, they don't give you cover. They don't respect you. The sorority doesn't, doesn't even consider that they're Christian ladies, a part of the sorority, you know, uh, nobody even probably discussed, well, how would this reflect on our Christian uh, 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 population? The number of those who are church-going Christian girls who love the Lord and, oh my, but they want to be a part of us. You know, this, this may be, this may negatively affect them. Should we, you know, why don't we just stay out of it? Uh, since since uh, the world certainly doesn't need any help. Uh, celebrating, they don't need another voice <laughs> celebrating Pride Month. I mean, they got just about everybody. So I guess, you know, you didn't even consider your, your Christian female membership and, uh, and, and maybe Christian sisters, they didn't, they didn't consider you because when you took the vow, you showed them that your Christianity wasn't worth it anyway. Because if you had it, and you were strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, you would say to them, I'm born again. And I serve a God who said, thou shall have no other God before me. That is, thou shall have no other God besides me. Why are you into something like this? That is celebrating wickedness, celebrating that which God calls an abomination celebrating the uh, community destructive and personal destructive behavior, celebrating a lifestyle that if everybody adapted it and, and walked in it, it would mean the extermination of the human race in less than, in just a few years, less than a hundred years, none of us would be left. You're in a lifestyle where you got to turn people out and you got to recruit because you can't reproduce unless you have to step into the realm, some type of realm of heterosexualism. Heterosexualism can get along just fine, I argue, can get along better without any form of homosexualism at all. But homosexualism would not exist without heterosexualism because in this lifestyle that you all are celebrating, people can't be reproduced. And by the way, Brother Gary, you find a whole lot of, uh, of these uh, uh, ladies uh, in uh, the abortion industry. And they, they it, it, it's something that there's a young lady, a young heterosexual lady, pregnant out of wedlock. She's scared. She's vulnerable. She don't want the baby. She didn't plan to get pregnant. And she's in a room. She's unaware that she's sitting in a room where everybody in that room is, is t who's talking to her, the overwhelming numbers of them are in lesbian relationships that don't produce children anyway. And many of them are bloodthirsty. They want to kill that baby. Now, but I noticed this. None of you are ever thirsty. Uh, you never have a thirst for your own blood to be shed. You don't want anyone to take your life, but you'll speak up and you'll encourage her to end her baby's life. I just visited a baby the other day, Brother Gary, I went into the, into the room and saw that beautiful child. The child could fit into my hand almost. And you, and when I talked to the mother, the mother was sharing with me how they were pressuring her, kill the baby, kill the baby, kill the baby. Thank God that mother stood for life and she stood her ground. And the little child is living and celebrating. Look like to me, praising the Lord and, and just, just growing. And, and the hand of God is with that child. And that mother will never regret letting that baby live. Glory be to God. So I'm, uh, would not you talking about uh, 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 abortion? Yeah, well, the abortion industry and the LBGTQ plus industry or community go hand and hand. They work together. 
and I'm here to sound the alarm, and uh, uh, and we're celebrating Jesus Pride Month. And so all month long, you're going to be hearing from this preacher, and I'm going to talk about it because I do not believe we should surrender anything to the devil. Now, starting tonight, Right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, our men's revival weekend begins right here. Sponsored by the Upper Room Church of God in Christ Men's Department. My president of the department, Elder Anthony Wilson, is doing a tremendous job. And we're excited about tonight. We have a special guest who is going to be speaking to you right here tonight. Now, I'm going to be here, but this special guest, he's the Bishop Frank J. Anderson. of uh, He's the prelate of Arkansas Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Uh, he is a man of God indeed, and he is going to preach the word of God to us. He's from... Uh, uh, Conway, Arkansas, and the Lord uses this man. He's been married over 61 years to the same woman. Praise the Lord. Has a tremendous church, over 100 churches in his jurisdiction. He's recognized throughout the uh, the length and breadth of the church of God in Christ and beyond for his his efforts, his holy walk. He was just given the keys to the city. They, when they want things done, when they want to uh, counsel, when they want to talk to a leader who can give them godly advice, the mayor, the powers that be, they speak to Bishop Anderson. They seek him out. As a matter of fact, I was in a conversation with him yesterday, and I asked him to share his sage knowledge with me, and he gave me very wise counsel. This man of God is going to be preaching here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I asked him to come, and it's going to be an amazing evening hearing from this mighty man of God. I'm going to be here, and I I want every one of you to tune in. We're reaching for our men. We're building men. And our theme is men answering the call to serve the God of the Bible only. First Samuel chapter 12 and verse 20 says, Yet turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord uh, with all your heart. And as never before, we got to serve him. We got to walk up right before him, seek his face, and he will bless us real good. Now, on Friday night, Friday night, yours truly, I will be the Friday night speaker right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And listen, God has given me something that is going to be an encouragement and a challenge to the believers. We're living in some serious times. And my friends, you need to know that you know that you know the Lord. You need to know it. And the evidence of knowing him must flow from our lives. The world is out to separate us from Jesus. The world is out to dumb down biblical Christianity. The world is trying, the devil is doing everything he can to get us to accept garbage and mess and wickedness, to get us to fit in. But God is calling for believers who don't mind standing out. Hallelujah. And standing up for Jesus and living the kind of life that says we are a different breed. We're a different kind of people. And I am so excited about that. And uh, I'm going to preach. Uh, I, I'm ready. I'm Brother Gary, I'm ready to preach it now. But I got to wait until, until, until Friday. Friday night. And I want you to come. And, uh, and it's open to everyone. And I want you to tune in. If you can't get here, this is a message that you certainly do not want to miss. And we're going to have our football camp. 
Now, I'm excited about that. It's going to start at 9 a.m. and it will go through 1.30 p.m. And we're expecting coaches from everywhere. We're expecting young uh, young men <clears throat> uh, to come out and be a part of it. Uh, last year, we had an, an, an incident where uh, just a cute little uh, girl, a parent brought their, their, their little girls out. But at our football camp, we target boys with all, all due respect uh, to the little girls. Uh, so much for our diversity and the inclusion and all that. Uh, we This is something that I think this is time that we want to spend with the young men. So... Uh, uh, that shouldn't that shouldn't bother you, uh, and if it does, then uh, they don't come. But for those who want their young men to be in a in in an environment where we that, that we're teaching them skills that's going to help them, life skills as well as skills on the football field. Elder Sherrod McCoy uh, is in charge. You can be reached at nine one nine seven zero two zero two nine nine. As a matter of fact, you see the flyer there on the screen. Sunday, I have a treat for you. D during the 8 a.m. service, the Elder Robert Williams will be preaching the Word of God, our first assistant and vice president of our men's ministry. And during the 11 a.m., the Elder Anthony Wilson, my second assistant, and president of the men's department will be preaching the word of God. Now this Sunday, for those of you who are watching in the D.C. area, at uh, Refreshing Springs, Church of God in Christ, 6200 Riverdale Road, Riverdale, Maryland, Men's Day, yours truly will be the speaker. I'm putting this service into the hands of the elder Robert Williams and the elder Anthony Wilson. God freed me to do it. I'm preaching here Thursday, uh, Friday night and Sunday morning. I am going to preach in uh, uh, Riverdale, Maryland at Refreshing Springs Church of God in Christ. The, the, the pastor is the Bishop James E. Jordan Jr., a man of God, if there's ever been one. God, now listen to me. I'm saying this about this, this coming Friday night. I'll say this about Sunday. God, the God of the Bible, has given me a word. And if you're in the D.C., Maryland area, come to hear the word of the Lord that God has given me. The theme is, we've got work to do. And God has given me a word to preach to the people in the, uh, in the entire area. And I'm excited about it. And I'm ready to declare God's truth. Now, I've run on today and run a little long. I probably sound as much like an announcement secretary as I've sound like a preacher. But as you can see, these are some serious times, and they're festive times. They're corrupt times, but I'm a part of the festivities because I'm celebrating Jesus' pride, and I'm so proud to be a Christian. I want everybody who knows me to know that I'm born again. I want everybody who knows me to know that I'm a part of a holiness church and that, yes, I am Pentecostal. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. I'm a part of the holiness church. The, the lifestyle, holiness is a lifestyle. Is how we live, is how we handle life, is how we treat our families, is how we uh, do conflict resolutions, is how we worship, is how we walk, is how we talk, it's what we preach. Glory to God. It's everything. Praise the Lord. And I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. So I want you to join me. I'm going to close this, Brother Gary. I can go on and on and on because there's so much to talk about. But you can't get it all into one advertisement spot. And I'm learning that I can't get it all into any one sermon, but I sure do try. <laughs> God bless you. I'll see you tonight right here 
at the upper room, Church of God in Christ, for great preaching and teaching, because we're going to hear from Bishop Anderson. Oh, my Lord. We were out yesterday having dinner, and what a marvelous time we had with Bishop Frank J. Anderson, a senior father in our church, filled with the Holy Ghost, highly anointed, and a tremendous man of God. He has honored us, us here uh, at the upper room by agreeing to come and to minister here. Come out tonight and hear him. God bless.